Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Dare to Game. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Warband. Uh, I keep wanting to say Bannerlord, but unfortunately I'm not playing that yet. Uh, and today's video is going to be five best infantry units in Mountain Blade Warband. So I'm just going to rank the five best, you know, infantry units. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. So let's just jump right into that with number five. So starting us off at number five, we have the Serenid Guard, and that's alongside the Vagir Guard for weakest melee infantry. And of course, when I say this, I mean out of the best. Um, so like the Vagir version, they sometimes rush into battle with no shield, although they carry shields more often than Vagirs do, and only medium armor, making them vulnerable to missile fire and melee. Although they are even faster than the Vagirs, they often carry Jareeds which are capable of inflicting kills before they even reach melee range against unshield opponents. Although most other infantry units do carry shields, they usually use spears as their main weapon. Although they are capable of carrying a rare two-handed Serenid battle axe that is more powerful than even the already powerful two-handed battle axes that other factions gain access to. So for number four we have the Vagir Guard. And the Vagir Guard alongside the Serenid Guard is a marked drop in soldier quality from their other top tier counterparts. Vagir Guards have relatively poor armor, and many of them lack shields altogether, making them vulnerable to ranged missile fire and in melee skirmishes. They do, however, possess a good running speed, and tend to carry powerful pole arms, or two-handed weapons like the Bardiche, that have a bonus to breaking through enemy shields, and they are capable of dealing quite a bit of damage in a short period of time, although they ultimately fall short because they are so incapable of resisting damage themselves. So bringing up the number three spot right in the middle, we have the Swadian Sergeant. So the Swadian Sergeant is a relatively versatile, but unfortunately slow melee unit, which lacks the hit points and shield of a Huskarl, but has better armor, being equipped with a the very strong coat of plate armor. They use one-handed weapons, such as a sword and mace, so that they can either kill or capture foes. They also carry a heater shield. In a castle, where they will not need to move much, they are durable opponents and good defenders, but lack the edge in breaking shields that housecarls do. Their low athletics rating will also slow down your party speed. So, the Swadian Sergeant is a good troop, but it does come in at number 3 because there are better troops. So at number 2 we have a matter of contention, because some people place the Swadian Sergeant ahead of this one, but in my ranking I don't. Uh, at number 2 we have the Rhodic Sergeant. And uh, the Rhodic Sergeant generally ranks in second place, thanks to its better board shield, uh, but the Rhodic troops tend to rely upon blunt weapons for attack, alongside a two-handed spear or pike, which they rarely use while they still possess a shield. This blunt weapon, however, will net you more prisoners, which you can make more money with, and hence support paying for more troops with. They are not quite as powerful as Huskarls, but are not a bad choice by any means. So bringing up the number one spot, we have the Nord Huskarl. So the Nord Huskarl is, by general consensus, the strongest melee unit in the game, due to having a good shield, the Huskarl's round shield, and good armor. But more importantly, due to having axes, which are more effective at chopping through enemy shields than other types of weapons are. They also have a chance to carry throwing weapons, which can give them an additional edge in battle. Huskarls also have a good athletics rating, making them less of a drag on your party speed if you are also using cavalry. So. For many reasons, the Nord Huskarl is the number one spot, but it should be kept in mind that the training time and expenses for Huskarls is very high, so it can be prohibitive in the early to mid game. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you did, I can assume you liked the content, and hopefully you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you haven't already, check out these links I have on the screen to see me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you like my content and would like to support what I do here, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description, and a donation would be much appreciated. In any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.